Before we dive into this awesome component, I just want to make it clear that I'm not going to be talking about the back end in this video. I'll show you how to shape your data correctly so that when you send it to the back end, it's got everything it needs. However, the back end code itself, we won't be writing. We're also going to talk about things like sending authentication uh, tokens like bearer tokens. And we'll also talk about using with credentials. So if you're doing authentication with cookies, it should work okay as well. All right, with that said, let's go ahead and get started. We'll come up here and say q-uploader to start using this component. And we want to give it a URL. I'm going to give it HTTP dot dot slash slash local host because I have a local host server set up at 80 and 80 is the default port that's going to be used for HTTP. So I don't actually need to specify the port there. And then we'll say API slash upload. I believe that's the name of the endpoint. We'll find out in a moment. Now it's worth pointing out that this can actually be a function. So what I could potentially do here is say, let's just copy all of that, get URL, and then come down here and have a function that is get URL, oop, get URL, and then I can return that string. Now we actually get all of our files in here. So if you actually need to use that list of files, for example, maybe you want to say files.length so that the server knows how many files it's receiving for whatever reason, you can do that as well. So I'll quickly just prove this works by doing a console.log and then files, save it, open up our console and drag a file on there. Upload. And of course it's going to fail, but as you can see here, that file was actually logged. So you have those files available to you when you're getting the URL. All right, refresh, let's move on. And I'm going to bring this back to a simpler example. All right, there we go. Of course we can change the method. So by default, it's going to be post, but if you want, you can say method is equal to a put request. I'm not going to do that because I need to use a post request. And you can also say the field dash name for the field name that's going to be sent through with these files. For example, photo. Now my backend expects the field name to be photo, so that's what I'm going to use here. Since I don't have any authentication, this should be enough for it to work. This is where my backend is going to send through my photos. So let's come over here and drag and drop this picture on there and press the upload button, jump into public, and there we go. It was in fact received. How cool is that? All we had to do to use this component is say where the upload URL is, and you might not even need a field name depending on your backend. Pretty cool. And this is going to work with multiple files. If I drag on multiple files, let me just click on that tick there, then that's going to work as well. So we'll press the upload. Ah, but of course, I need to let it know that we can do multiple. So let's say multiple there. Let's refresh the page and see if it'll work this time. There we go. They all show up. Press the upload button and they all get sent through. Once again, I'll delete those and let's push on. Tick. There is a very good chance that your authentication is using bearer tokens. So what we can do here is say headers and send through the bearer token. We can do that by saying an object here for our headers and it's going to receive a name for the name of the header and then the value of the header value and then that might be something like bearer and then whatever your token is and then for the name of the header maybe you'll say authorization this is going to be a very common pattern there's a very good chance that you'll need this code in order to get the queue uploader to work and by the way if you need it this can be a function that returns an array okay what else can we do we can also say with dash credentials so especially if you're doing cookie-based authentication, there's a good chance that you'll want to add in here with credentials. Another thing you can do is send through some form fields. So maybe, for example, this uploader is sitting inside of a comment. So in that case, you might want to send through the comment ID so that the uploaded file can attach itself onto the comment in the back end. So that would all happen on the back end, but on the front end, you might say something like this. Form-fields, and then send it through an array. And then you can say inside of an object, the name of that field, for example, comment underscore ID, and then the ID itself. So let's say value is equal to five. This is something that you're also very likely to do, or maybe even a user ID. And then on the back end, it validates that that user ID is in fact 
allowed to be uploaded for this user. So you might use this in tandem with some sort of authorization. Again, this can also be a function if it needs to. All right, what else can we do? We can also say auto-upload. So if I save that now, notice that public is empty. And if I drag and drop all of these files on there, jump over to public, they've already been uploaded. So that's pretty good to know. There's a good chance that you might want to use auto upload depending on your situation. I'm gonna leave that on because it's probably going to make the rest of the video easier. And let's do a bit of styling now. So color is equal to whatever you want. So we could say red there. We can say text dash color and set it to something like black. We can say flat if we want to get rid of that shadow design that we get by default. And then if you have it flat, you might also want to make it bordered. Another thing you can do is square off those borders. So currently they're rounded. We can say square just to make things a little bit more rigid if that's needed for your application. And another thing you can do is say no dash thumbnails. And if we do that, drag our photos on there, we don't get the thumbnails anymore. Oh, have to come in here and delete them all again now. <laughs> There we go. What else can we do? Well, I might get rid of a lot of this just to bring us back to a simpler example. We've also got batch. And in order to understand what batch does, let me quickly just get rid of it. We'll go full screen here. Click on those ticks. Open up the console and jump into our network tab. Now, if I drag these files on there, let's see what happens in the network tab. Notice that we're uploading all of those files one at a time. See, we've got several uploads for every single image. Now, what you might want to do is upload them in one request. If your backend supports that, then there's a good chance that you'll want to use it. So let's go ahead and have a look at how we might tackle this problem. We can come in here and say batch. And if I go full screen now, and let's come up here and bring in network tab again. Drag them straight on. It's going to send a batch request with all of those photos. And we can see it there in the form data. Now, one important thing to know here is there's a good chance that your field name has to be photo and then some brackets like this if you're doing multiple file uploads all at once. So there's a good chance that you have to say batch and then add in here those brackets. So if that makes sense for you, add in the brackets. If your server doesn't need it, then don't add in the brackets. You might wanna play around with those options uh, in order to see if you can get it to work. This kind of thing can be really annoying. Like I often don't catch this when I'm coding stuff because I just forget that I need to have the brackets there for multiple files and then I don't for single files. So make sure you hard code this into your brain because I promise you it's one of those problems that will show up at some point in your life. Okay, moving on. Let's get rid of that, get rid of batch. Another thing you're almost certainly going to need is some form of restrictions. So at the moment, I can actually, if I come in here and delete everything, I'm probably allowed to upload an Excel document. There we go, that worked. So what if I don't want the user to be able to send through an Excel document? Well, first of all, you definitely, definitely want to restrict that on the back end. Because if it's not restricted on the back end, technically the user can find a way to upload any type of document. And this could be a security issue. And it also means that the user can send through documents that may not make sense for your upload form. So that's really important to know. I'm going to show you how to restrict things on the front end, but you also need to restrict it on the back end. Very important. So let's come in here and say, accept to change the types of files that are accepted. And we're going to say, I only want images and it can accept any type of image. So this star basically means it can be a PNG, it can be a JPG or JPEG, whatever you wanna call it. All of those are going to work, any type of image. And the cool thing about this is when you click on the plus sign and you go into the browser, notice that we've got image files here. It's only going to allow you to select image files by default. And this can be particularly useful on mobile devices. So there you go. This is a great way to filter through what is accepted. If I now try and put in this Excel document, it's simply not going to work at all. Another thing we can do is say what happens if that is rejected. So if the user tries to upload something that's not an image, what are we going to do? Let's say at rejected, and we'll have a function called on rejected, handle rejected, whatever you want to call it. 
Now we can say function on rejected here, and that is going to receive the rejected entries. In other words, the files that were rejected. So let's start with a console.log there, save it, and then we'll drag that on, open up our console and go full screen. And there's an array of all of the files that were rejected. So you get the file and it also tells you why it was rejected. So failed prop validation is saying this was rejected because of accept. And specifically, that's this prop here. So it's saying the accept prop failed validation. Oh, I'm going to have to reformat this again now. There we go. Thank goodness that worked easily. <laughs> Okay, so now we can know why it was rejected. And another thing we can do here is a couple of other rejection types. So we can say max file dash size is equal to, and for example, 2048. And if it goes over that max file size, if an individual file goes over this file size, then it's going to be rejected. And we've also got max total size. Now, max total size, as the name implies, is saying if all of the files put together that have been put into this form exceeds that number, then it will be rejected. Okay, so let's see what happens if I try and drag all of these on there. I might just open the console. We're running out of space here, aren't we? How about this? Let's, let's create a little bit more space. Drag that out at there. We've got plenty of space on the editor. All right. Good to go. So we now have a max file size and that should call on rejected. Let's grab all of these, drag them straight on. And here we go. These were all rejected. And we're seeing there that the reason was max file size. Let's just add a few zeros here. Save it. And we'll try it again. Drag these on. Now we're getting max total size. So let's add a few zeros onto here, try it again. And there we go, everything uploads. So here's something that I would probably do. I'd probably do something like this. Const map errors, something like that, and then give it an object. And then inside of there, I would have these different properties. So one of them was accept. And I'll copy paste that down a couple of times. One of them was max file size. One of them was max total size. And then I can just alt click those and then say what they're equal to. Add the commas in, accept, and then we can say only images, please. Max file size, we could say exceeded max file size. And then we could say here exceeded total file size. And you can do whatever messaging you want there. Save it. And then on rejected, how about this? How about we jump into our quasar.config? And then we look for plugins. Here we go. Under framework plugins, we can now say notify. So I want to use the notify plugin. Let me just check that that's going to work. And it does. So now let's jump back into our index page. And that means that I can now import notify and basically send through a notification. So that's going to come from Quasar. So if we have any of these errors, then I want to basically notify the user of that error. How about this? We'll keep it really simple. Notify.create, so create a notification, but we want to do it for every rejected entry. So we'll say rejected entries dot for each, and then we'll call this entry. And now I can say notify.create, so create a notification for this entry that did not work. And I believe here we've got message, yep. Then we can say map errors. So we're jumping into our errors map here. And then we're going to pull out entry dot, and I believe it was validation prop. Let's just save it and see if that works. Oh, they're all working. <laughs> Let's change these to smaller numbers. Save it, let's try that again. And the errors are showing up, but it looks like I got this wrong. So let me just console.log this quickly to find out what the correct what the correct property is here. Drag that on. Failed prop validation. So let's copy that and we'll paste it in here. Failed prop validation and see if it works this time. 
And there we go. We can see what that error is. Now, of course, you'd come in here and say, for example, type is equal to, how about negative? And that means that we're going to get a red error. Yeah, you get the idea. So there's a few ways that you could handle this. But I think that's really awesome. It's, it's actually quite straightforward to just map some errors and say, hey, I want you to deal with all of these situations. And if any of those error situations come up, then just let the user know. Error handling in Quasar is always really simple. I love that it's so well thought out. So there you have it, pretty straightforward. One more thing that I wanted to point out before finishing this video though, is that Quasar allows other upload services. So you could potentially create, for example, a Firebase upload service. Essentially, you can recreate this component using an interface, and that interface is then going to allow you to upload with something like Firebase or maybe even Superbase, or maybe you even have a file upload for an Electron app. I'll be honest, I don't even know exactly what that would look like, but you could essentially re-implement a lot of Quasar's functionality for this component so that it works really nice in Electron like across different platforms, stuff like that. So if you want to be a hero and my new best friend, then try creating your own Q uploader component. And I'll quickly show you where it is in the docs because I would love it if somebody actually did this for something like Superbase or Firebase. Let's just say quasar.dev and we'll run a search on supporting other services because I know that's the name of the section. And there it is in the Q uploader component. So if you go to the Q uploader component in the documentation, it shows you, by the way, a little bit of code for different backends that you might want to use. So there is a little bit of a starting point there if you need it. But we're interested in this bottom section here, supporting other services, and that's going to show you how you can basically create your own version of the uploader component. And essentially, you just use this composable, which then gives you the component. And they even show you where in the documentation they do the XHR upload. So here it is here, source code. And this can help you as a starting point if you need it. All right, that's enough talk. So that's the Q uploader component. I hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed making it for you. I love that we get this insane amount of functionality for very little code. Because I mean, when you think about it, essentially all we needed was this in order to have a functioning upload a component. Combine that with your headers or your with credentials, and in no time at all, you've got an uploader that is going to work with authentication as well. So how cool is that? I love it. I love how Quasar makes this stuff ridiculously simple. And I'll see you in the next video where we explore something else.